So now let's talk about how to structure the campaign. Now that we know what our KPIs are, how do we structure the campaign to really win and to get the best results? Again, I talked about making sure that the, the ad groups are broken into smaller targets so that we can really match it. Some of the some of the ad groups, so really what I mean is breaking it down into like a brand campaign, a general plumbing campaign, a drain cleaning campaign, water heater campaign, right? And I'm gonna share an example of what I find to be the ideal campaign for plumbing and the idea campaign structure, the different campaigns you should run for HVAC. So that when you bring it into AdWords and you look at it in the AdWords uh, platform, you can see, okay, here's my brand campaign, here's my geo campaign, which just means you know, like all of the little cities that I'm targeting so that when someone types in, you know, Miami, Dallas, uh, uh, Miami, Kendall, Palmetto Bay, I'm targeting those particular areas with hyper-specific verbiage. Uh, and then I've got my service campaigns broken down. If you're not breaking it down at this level, you're gonna be leaving money on the, on the table. So then if we click on you know, plumbing and we drill down on drain cleaning, we've got all the different keywords that are specific to that ad group, right? So we're talking about drain cleaning, we've got drain cleaning, drain cleaning, drain repair, unclogged drain, right? That's where those keywords sit. And then we've got text ads that match, right? So we've got an ad group, then we've got keywords, and then we've got text ads. So this is the ad, you know, the, the drain cleaning example. Number one drain cleaning service. Call XYZ company today. So we've got the keyword in the in the, the text ad, and then we've actually got it in the URL, and we're landing them on a page that speaks to that particular drain cleaning service. Does that make sense what I'm talking about? Like, so some of you guys have never seen Google AdWords, you've never seen the platform. So ideally sim, seeing these screenshots kind of bridges the gap. That's what I mean with, like we really chunk it into ad groups. We chunk it into you know, text ads that, that speak to that and we chunk it into landing pages that, that restate that service and have a compelling call to action relevant and congruent to that. So within plumbing, and it really depends upon, it really depends upon, um, you know, you, it depends on the services you provide, the, the types of business that you want to attract. But usually we're setting up a brand campaign, which Somebody typing for like if you're if you're Paul the plumber, right? They're typing in Paul the plumber. We want to make sure we're showing up in the paid ad and the organic listings because our cost per click on our own company name is very low. And if we're not bidding, our competition is. Right? Believe it or not, our competition could be showing up for your name if we're not bidding on it. So we want to make sure we're at the top. Obviously, we're going to be ranking in maps. Obviously, we're going to be ranking organically. But it's worth spending a couple dollars having our brand protected, right? So we're showing up everywhere when our client is ready to, to click on us and do business with us. Then we want general plumbing. So that's just like they literally type in plumber, plumbing, plumbing services, right? That's kind of a more general. And then we want to get into the specifics, the nitty gritty, the very specific thing they're looking for, which could be you know, drain cleaning, hydro jetting, router, router services. Then within water heaters, are they looking for water heater repair, which means they need someone to come out and fix it? Are they looking for replacement, which would mean they're like they're, they know it's broken and they need a new one placed out? And their, their thought process for all of these different services is a little bit different. So you really have to get into your customer's mind. You have to get into their situation and then enter and say, okay, what are they thinking? How can I make sure that when they type that keyword, my text ad speaks relevantly to that? And my landing page speaks relevantly to that and offers them a next step congruent with what they were looking for. This is like the psychology behind making these, these campaigns work really well and get a great return on investment. So within HVAC, we've got Obviously, a brand campaign, AC repair, AC replacement, heater repair, heating replacement, furnace repair, furnace replacement, emergency AC, emergency heating repair, indoor air quality, which kind of opens up a whole nother bag of tricks, uh, AC checkup, AC filters, AC maintenance, AC tune-up, air duct cleaning, air handling, boiler repair, boiler installation, ductless mini slips, evaporator coils, geothermal, radiant floors, etc. So the point is you got to have figured out the different classifications of keywords so that you can set up your campaign, so you can set up your ad groups, and you can really map this out 
effectively. Now, it's really important when you're running your AdWords campaign or when you're looking at how your provider is running the campaign that you've thought about the different um, match types. So when you set up an AdWords campaign and you put in your keywords, Google has identified four different match types. Broad match, modified broad match, phrase match, and exact match. And for most of you watching this, this is just Chinese. It's like, okay, what's the difference? It's really important that whoever runs your campaign understands these and is using the proper match type. Because if they use broad match, that's just giving Google a license to put you out and to get you to be clicked on for just about any term that could generally be related to that service. And I, I've seen campaigns where somebody just randomly dropped in plumber, plumbing, plumbing service, plumbers near me, and they that's broad match terms. And the, the amount of keywords they were showing up for and the amount of clicks that they were getting and the amount that they were spending for irrelevant terms would blow your mind. So you want to make sure that you're using, ideally, phrase match and exact match keywords. Modified broad match is okay in a lot of cases. Basically what you're saying with modified broad match is plus the word, plus plumber. Give me anything that has that with plumber in it. So that could, that could really kind of open up a lot of different things. So what do we find is phrase match, exact match work really well. As you run the campaign, as you optimize it, you find exact phrases that are getting lots of search volume, getting lots of clicks, and then you set up exact match ad groups and exact match keyword phrase match for, that ter for those terms so that you can write even a more specific text ad and generate even better results from your campaign. So I don't want to get too technical, but it's really important that whoever's running your campaign understands these different types of, um, of matches and that they're paying attention to their negative keyword list. And just negative means regardless of what they typed in, regardless of the match type that we programmed into our campaign, if it's combined with this, we don't want to show up for it. Um, a great example, we were looking at a campaign for one of our potential clients and we were looking at it to see, you know, is it good, is it bad, could it be better, you know, why is it that it's not generating return on investment? And we were seeing like they were spending a lot of money on auto AC repair, right? Auto AC repair, which just means that the um, whoever set it up didn't have a negative for the term auto, right? Obviously, if, they're, if, they, if they typed AC repair, we want that, but if they typed auto AC repair, car AC repair, we don't want that. And so what we have, we actually have a list of 880 negative key terms. These are terms that we've already identified that are across our entire campaign as if they add this to their search phrase in any form, we want it out. And so some of the obvious ones are jobs, helpful if you're recruiting, not helpful if you're not, careers, car, association, auto. These are all things you want to pay close attention to and make sure that you get added to your negative list to avoid wasting money on terms that aren't going to convert and aren't going to add any value to your to your business. Well, I hope you got value from that video. If you'd like more ideas, strategies, and techniques on how to really more effectively market your plumbing or HVAC business online, I'd like to invite you to go to plumberseo.net slash checklist. Uh, there we've outlined the ultimate online marketing checklist for plumbing and HVAC contractors to, to really maximize your lead flow online. This really simplifies the entire online marketing equation into a checklist that you can easily identify what you should do next and what you could do to really probably double, triple, or even 10x the number of leads you're getting for your plumbing or HVAC business online. So you can get that completely free of charge, simple one-page checklist with a video that explains and kind of walks you through it. Just go to plumberseo.net slash checklist. Talk to you soon.